let's go. Your time is running out. I'm talking here and now. I'm talking here and now. It's not about what you've done. It's about what you do. It's all about where you go. I'm Claire Hawkin, Chief Marketing Officer here at Splunk. And with me, I have Splunk's Chief Growth Officer, Theresa Carlson. Hi. And Sean Bice, President of Product and Technology. Theresa and Sean, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're coming to you live from DotConf21. This event is ultimately a celebration of our customers, partners, Splunkers, and the transformational power of data. And lots of you want to talk about data. We have 30,000 attendees registered here at DotConf, more than 200 breakout sessions, 160 of our customers are sharing their stories. We have 60 partners activating on solutions for Splunk, and everyone here is fascinated with how they can accelerate outcomes, outcomes with data. This is my fourth .conf, but Teresa and Sean, it's your first. And so I'd love to get your take on reactions and your best conf 21 moments. That sounds great. <laughs> Theresa, let's start with oh, you. Oh, I get to start. Okay, so, well, first of all, hi, everyone. Claire, thank you for having us. Um, well, first of all, the fact that we were able to get 30,000 registered and attending here is amazing in a short period of time. That just tells you how interested everyone is in Splunk, what we're offering, what our announcements were. So it was fantastic. For my first dot .com, I will say I really got a sense of the splunkiness and the culture and the individuals. We had all these uh, Slack channels going on and people were posting all of their amazing best times at the dot coms. And I just gave you a sense of what this community is about. And also our customers, the amazing stories from our customers. I mean, their analyst days, just being in the sessions, hearing how they were talking about their usage, usage of Splunk. Uh, and then, of course, for me, I was very excited to actually get out there yesterday and tell the story, be able to talk about uh, for my role as president and growth chief growth officer in terms of all of our go to market. What were we really going to be able to do the rest of this year and going into next year to really support our customers? And we'll talk about a little bit more about, you know, the pricing side of what we're doing for our customers on pricing our our Splunk partner verse, our customer success stories. So, so many things to be excited about as we go into the rest of this year and then as we prepare for the year after, which is moving very fast. Absolutely, and I think dot .conf is always a, a playground of, of, of lots of different activations. So Sean, what, what piqued your interest? Uh, you know, uh, I was in my first Splunk commercial. That you were, you were. I, I've never done that before. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, you know, it's so fun to just 
poke fun at yourself and screw around. So, you know, that was a good time. Um, uh, the customer stories, like, you know, going to dinner with the F1 folks was really cool because I happen to be an F1 fan and, and they're using our technology in a way uh, that is pretty fascinating. So to talk to Lando just one-on-one -on -one and ask him, you know, what could technology do to help you win races? I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and then, you know, just the, throughout the day, like Teresa was saying, the Slack channels to see uh, everybody sharing moments, talking to customers, um, telling the story. It, the, all of it has actually been a ton of fun. And it's been so good to yeah. have you both yeah. here for all this blank stuff. trust. Yes, I love this blank trust. Understanding all the individuals that help our customers outside the force multipliers of our business. All that was really fun. And I do have to say what Sean said. The commercial was so much fun <laughs> to actually tee this up. And I know you've been doing that for a long time. So we're we're learning some of the stuff as we go. And you, and you talk about the commercial, and um, we have a we have a joke here that Splunk is actually just a million a multi billion dollar t shirt company um, masquerade is a data company. Um, so I'm wearing actually a McLaren inspired t-shirt, data set go. I'm going to ask you a quick quiz, quick, quest, quick quiz question and Sean, I'll come to you first. What's your favorite t-shirt slogan? Well, you know, that's almost a trick question <laughs> because I don't, man, I have like 20 of these things now and everyone makes me laugh. But I, the, to answer your question, I kind of have to go with you bet your sweet sass because I, I was joking around. I asked uh, the internet, like, hey, I'm going to do a keynote. What shirt? And I can't tell you. There's like over 15,000 views of this thing, but that T-shirt made it to the top of the list. So it's my favorite <laughs> I love right that. I love that. Excellent. I think I wore, you know, the cloud inspired yesterday and I liked that one. I thought that was fun because one of my big, big roles, I think, here is to really help our customers move to the cloud faster. I uh, make sure that we have the right program. So that one's near and dear to my heart. But I kind of like looking for trouble. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I like easy. that one. I like that one. I think it's kind of fun and sassy. So I like that. I'm hoping to be able to name one soon. Like I'm hoping to be able to name one. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about what that would be. We have a t-shirt committee. So yeah. we have I, to oh, pass okay. it through them. Everything's it's, done I'm very sure democratically. Exactly. But I'm it's, sure. And I won't try to influence. I'll just put it in with no name on it. It's a real, yeah, a real <laughs> moment of honor is getting your first Splunk t-shirt. So I'm sure it won't be too long. So, so let's dig in and let's talk about how Splunk helps bring all that data and turn it into action. So Teresa, you know, over the past two years, especially with the pandemic, we've seen digital transformation just sort of, you know, race forward and, and with it, the, the power of, of data. So maybe you can talk a little bit about what we're seeing and why customers are racing to the cloud. Sure. And I know, I'm sure Sean can jump in on this too. But, you know, during the pandemic, really, we saw customers moving to the cloud at a pace like no other. And they're already moving fast. If you look at the trends of digital transformation, it's already happening. And the reason digital has happened is because customers have access to true cloud, large compute scale, mm -hmm. storage capabilities of, you know, for years ago, people actually talked about um, machine learning, but they're, they really couldn't do it because without cloud, you couldn't scale fast. You couldn't have that ability to go global quickly. And so you were really limited in the data centers that you had. So today, if you think fast forward, we have so many devices and locations for our customers and digital is just part of moving around, right? You don't even think about it as you use your phone and all the devices. Um, so, but also what's happening around digital is that customers tell us that without moving to the cloud and using tools like our Splunk security and our Splunk observability, that they actually can't be competitive. And that's the thing. And why? Because they cannot move fast enough. They cannot have that deep experimentation, that ability to fail quickly. And so as a part of the true digital going global experience, uh, you need to get there faster. And it, what we're seeing at Splunk is a combination of customers still in their data center and moving to the cloud, but using all types of edge devices and sensors and everything else. So the capabilities are all over the place. And that's where Splunk, I really, that's our sweet spot, that we can really support those customers in a digital cloud-based way from wherever they are, taking all those, that sensor information, the IoT, wherever your data is, on-prem, multiple clouds, and then we can really help the customer sort through that. They don't have to make a choice anymore about what data they ingest and use in terms of our new workload-based pricing. But just the digital transformation, the net-net, customers 
governments around the world tell us in order to be competitive, compete, be agile, move fast, they have to be digital, period, end of, end of story. Interesting, and I, I, you know, I think in our, all of our lives, either professional or personal, over the last 18 months, two years, we're just so much more connected and we're doing things, we're living more digitally. So, yeah. Sean, hopefully you can help me understand this. If, if data is everywhere, then why is putting it to use so difficult? Yeah, I mean, that's the million dollar question, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, you know, um, why is it hard? You know, it, uh, what I've seen, uh, is customers that find a way to move fast and they get value out of their data, they kind of look at these problems today through a new lens. In other words, they're, they're not trying to solve today's problems with yesterday's solution. What do I mean by that? Like, you might have been, you might have faced a challenge, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, and then you go, oh, hey, that worked, that worked. And then if that's the only way you're going to think about things today, you, you, you know, I, I, there's this term I've used before, like, Try not to let familiarity become a blind spot that stifles innovation. And, and I see that in tech just because there's so many new things that you, you can become familiar and maybe sort of think, well, that's the only way to solve stuff. But the ones that are, as Teresa was saying, that are moving fast and they're more agile, they create new experiences. What When you sit down with those customers, what you'll hear them say is things like this, like, oh, we can bring all sorts of data into our system, no problem. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's easy. Oh, is it from a sensor? Is it from a vehicle? Is it, is it a military vehicle? Is it a drone? Is it off of a ship? You know, is it off of a factory floor? Like they can bring data into the, into this system very, very quickly. And it's, it's with uh, very little effort. So if you can get data into the system quickly, then the next thing that you'll hear them say is, I can ask whatever question. I don't know what I'm going to ask tomorrow or this afternoon, but when I go to invent something, I want to be able to ask the question and extract value out of my data. Um, and then you'll hear them say things like, well, mm, it's not one team that manages a whole environment. It could be the networking folks, the security folks. You could be on the app team. You could be on a different team. But if I share something with you, if I can share it with you in context, all of a sudden we're working better together. So at the end of the day, when you get data in, you can you can quickly ask whatever you want of it. Uh, you, you may not even know what you're going to ask the next day. You get value out of it. You can share this stuff. You can visualize it. That's what you hear from companies that really have transformed digitally because they're getting so much value out of their data. Yeah. And one of the things that Sean made me think of, I had a customer the other day talk about Splunk as business continuity. And it's the first time I'd ever heard that, but I thought it was so interesting. And the reason they were talking about it, they said they get so much information from the data that comes in that they actually use that data in ways they hadn't thought about. Because to Sean's point, you may know the questions you want to ask now. And you can ask like, which t-shirt do you want me to wear? Here's like, tell me. And then you, ha you can ask exact questions. But you might have multiple data sets that you're not exactly sure at the moment in time, but you can go back to it and use that data to find out different things about your business. And I, it was just so interesting when this CTO said, we, we really think about Splunk as a business continuity tool because we have the data and we get those insights that we don't even think that we need at the moment, that, but we can use it over time because while, it, while Splunk doesn't stop a threat from getting through your door, a cyber attack, we use all the information that we have to set ourselves up to protect us, to protect us. So we have that continuity down the road. And I was like, that's, I really, again, back to they use, our customers and partners use our tools for things we don't even think about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think um, one of the things we believe at Splunk is that there are, you know, potentially unlimited use cases as you bring data to everything that mm -hmm. you do. Um, so, Sean, you've you've championed a, a load of announcements on the product and technology side here this week at DotConf. Mm -hmm. Can you pick maybe your top three and, and talk to us about why you, you think they're special? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, there, you know, we've talked about there's so many. I, I wish we could, we probably should like do a show where we just talk about it would probably like last for hours, but you know, that's why we have super sessions and all the 200 breakouts that you're mentioning. But three that sort of kind of come to mind real quickly are one, um, there's a lot of, in fact, I was just on a call just an hour ago with a customer who was like, oh man, data ingest is exactly what we need. And what is data ingest? It, 
it sounds like this, hey, when we're ingesting data, I might want to filter things out that don't matter to me right now, or I might want to redact data before I store it, or I don't even want to store it in Splunk. I, I, uh, like, I want to keep this data, but I'm going to go stick it in something like S3, which is like super economically cheap for... And, oh, I can do that with uh, uh, ingest actions. So they get excited about that. Another that I think is a lot of fun, you know, Teresa and I uh, grew up in a box software world with Microsoft, with, you know, on-prem software. Yeah. And, uh, and we did, haven't planned this. It's, you know, like we were both at Microsoft. We were, she was at Amazon before me. We were at Amazon. And then you now I think about it. You're at Splunk before me. <laughs> and we're both <laughs> here at that. Splunk. Six months. Four, Four months, months, you yeah. know, but, but, you know, we've got a lot of, um, shared experiences. And, um, so the reason I share that context with you is I don't think of on-premise software as being a liability. It's actually a strength. Like the fact that Splunk is in the data plane of tens of thousands of enterprises, it's a real responsibility, yeah. but it's an opportunity. What do I mean? Well, as we go to the cloud and people are putting workloads in the cloud, a lot of customers are like, look, I've got data on-prem. I have it in a cloud. I, ha I actually have it in multiple clouds, but I'd love to be able to search Splunk data wherever it is from one consolidated thing. So that's federated search, which is fun. And then uh, I, I think I'm biased from this morning, but I was talking to a customer who was so excited about our dashboard studio and how quickly they could build, you know, if a picture is worth a million words to you, which is I'm a very visual person, so I, there's tons of value. But this customer is so fired up, man. They could create that. They were like, oh, man, we can create dashboards with like anybody can do this now. So that, that that's pretty exciting work. That's for the team. really customers love that. The dashboards are. <laughs> yeah, I was speaking to a customer yeah. this morning that's in the business of um, smart grills and smart ovens. And, and he was saying that one of the, the big accelerators was as soon as he could show the data to the business and put them in those dashboards, they could start to see it and get really inspired. So his advice was do that as fast as you can to yeah. start seeing what you're dealing with. Um, so, so thinking about all these great products, I think one of the, the big amplifiers and the, you know, one of the things that you're really focused on, Teresa, are the, is the power of partnerships. And wow. it's been a big week here for our Splunk partners. So maybe you could share a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'm so excited about our new Splunk Partnerverse program. And Claire helped me name this. We had a lot of fun naming this. And we feel like we can do so many things with their Splunk Partnerverse and showcase all over the universe. <laughs> where our partners are. And, and the reason I use that as an example, Claire, is because our partners can take our tools and technologies to places that we never thought of. And it's one reason over the years, I've always loved partners because they, I use the word force multiply because they really do. Uh, we, we, we are very dependent on them in many ways. And so the customers dependent on partners. They, they're what makes the world go around, right? You need unique partners that understand different things. And we cannot possibly understand every horizontal or every vertical. And our technologies help with a lot of that. But, but when it comes to implementing or helping a customer with exact workloads or use cases, those partners really do magic. So we're excited about, we announced yesterday, new partner program that, that we're launching that will give them more access to tooling, more access to marketing support, more training and education. And the key is it's much more focused on Splunk Cloud and digital because we already have a great partner community of over 2,000 partners today. So we want to continue to embrace those partners. And obviously, all customers don't live in a cloud-based world all the time, but we are seeing the tipping point starting to happen of so many customers. So very, very excited about the work we're going to be continue, continue to do and new stuff with partners. Great. And I want to talk about your partnership together. So um, I've, I've been at Splunk a number of years and it's been really great to welcome you both in. And Sean, you look after our entire product and technology organization and Teresa obviously across go to market. Yeah. And um, you both have a real passion obviously for our customers and you put that in the heart of everything you do. I'd love to you, for you to just discuss a little bit about why the partnership between the two of you and the transformation of Splunk is so important because it's been pretty special. I'll let my partner go first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, one, I do not, I don't believe, I don't believe there's such a thing as one team is more important than another. Like, just don't, you know, I grew up playing sports my whole life and I, I don't, there's no, it's not like one position. Sure. A quarterback is an important position, but you know, so is the lineman that blocks for the quarterback. So is the trainer that put the quarterback on the field. And so is the coach who's calling the play. So I'm just a huge believer and I've learned in life it, it it's a it when you get a whole team working together the best can all, almost always happen 
And uh, my only hesitation there is I'm immediately thinking, oh, you better have a good game plan what you're doing, <laughs> though. But, uh, you know, but in that regard, I think with uh, Teresa and I, the you know, we both get excited about, like, what is what are our customers trying to do with what it is that we're providing? And when you think like that and work like that, then it turns out everybody's role is important. Everybody, literally, the, your role from what you do to what engineers are doing to what Teresa herself uh, is doing, it's always representing our customers and Splunk as a whole. So when you think like that and you have a leadership team that works like that, and then you got a whole org that works like that, it's, it's pretty awesome. You know, when it all comes together, you can, you can do great things. Well, and I agree with Sean, and also I'll just share that, you know, because of the roots of what we've done together uh, over, you know, we've, we've crossed paths multiple times, but the, but the key is as two leaders of an organization, one in the product technology, one in the go-to-market, we have to be connected to the hip. And the only way that we're going to make our customers successful is if we're really listening and working back from their needs. And really that synergy of what we hear in the field and what we pass on to Sean and team and they hear back and pass us and we make joint decisions on, you know, how do we present those tools? What are the priorities of those features and tools? How do we name them in the most effective way that somebody will say that makes a lot of sense? How do we simplify what we do and not not complexify what we do. And if we work together on that, it really helps us move faster. And the last thing I'll, sh I'll share, you know, even internally, the way we launch a new service, and Claire, you know this, because you and your team play such a huge role in this part, but from the concept of even creating something that we decide together, is there something in the market, the market's telling us that we need to do it. From the time the ideation starts, all the way through to launch and then delivery and service, we should be totally connected into how we do that. And we learn not that we'll ever, but we'll get, you know, a thousand percent right all the time. But I think when you have that good partnership in terms of give and take, and you can debate an issue, we laugh because we sure, we shouldn't agree on everything. And then I also think that makes a partnership stronger internal to a company when you, when you're not, you can't just yes everything, you got to debate. You know, is that right? Why do you think that's right? Could it be better with data? Then you can, I think, go faster and really service your customers in the proper way. And we're excited. We're just getting going. We're we're still very new, so we're still getting our sea legs. And I think, I don't want to speak for Sean, but I think we're both learning new things every day, even here at Splunk, yep. in terms of, you know, the culture, how things are working. And hopefully we're, we'll bring some good things into the culture as well. But so far, we love the Splunkiness. Yeah, and you're bringing, you're, you're bringing a lot to the culture. And I think it's, it's been great to see you on stage and to, to be sort of totally um, immersed in that Splunk culture, which you're, you're adding so much to. So that's been really special. Um, so the last two years for everyone have been really unpredictable and it's forced a lot of organizations into a, a reactive mode. Um, but there are ones that are thriving and they're turning all of that unpredictability into an opportunity. Um, and I was reading some research by IDC the other day that sort of said that 30% of organizations have been able to accelerate their innovation through such a tough time. Um, so Sean, thinking about you know, the abundance of data and all of these great technologies, um, how can organizations move into that proactive stance and really start to get ahead? Yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's having the mindset that I'm going to turn my data into doing. And you know, I look at, uh, I don't know, take the, take the University of Illinois uh, students. I, look, I have two college kids, and when they go to campus, we think about, is it safe? University of Illinois has done 3.2 million saliva tests, and they're doing contract contact tracing, uh, trying to spot things happening in the data so that they can sort of take corrective action. That is a perfect example of turning data into doing. We talk so much about F1, but could you imagine if F1 didn't use data? Like going to dinner with Lando the other night, I, I, it's the first time I met him, he's a great person, but I'm like, hey, if, if data could do anything to help you win a race, what would you pick? What would you do with it? And I didn't know what he was gonna say, but it was amazing how fast he was. Oh, if data, we could do this, 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 and this, and this. But for him, this guy literally thinks I could win or lose a race based on the blink of an eye, like a millisecond. So that, that decision yeah. making, that's that he, they, F1's an enterprise and they're just digitally transforming with data. Or the last one I kind of think of, you know, Slack. I, we, many of us use Slack each and every day, but Slack now has this massive responsibility to make sure their systems are secure. They're using 
They're taking all of that data they have and then using Splunk to make sure that that environment is secure for all of us communicating on that platform. So when you have that mental model of I'm going to turn data into doing, the, a lot of these folks are just using Splunk to uh, build that sort of what I would call a really strong data foundation, then they really can do these transformations. It's pretty yeah, awesome. It's true. Thank you. And I can't believe it. We're nearly out of time. It's gone so quickly. Yeah. I have more questions. Wow. I get to ask those behind the scenes. <laughs> but, um, as dot .conf draws to a close, um, I, I'd love to know just to both of you, what are you most excited about? And if you had a crystal ball, just what are, what are the, some of the things that you would predict for the future around technology? Well, before we go there, I just have to say, I didn't get to tell everybody, one of the most exciting things I think that could really fuel the growth is our new announcement on pricing, which is uh, workload pricing for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we listened to our customers. We heard some say, hey, we need you to make sure that the pricing meets the need for what we're doing. We listen. We've changed it. We have had workload-based pricing for a while, but we've opened it up to everyone now on Splunk Cloud. And I do think that will really fuel the growth. But I would say the last big trend is just making use of your data. To your point earlier, like we ha it's on us to make it easier for our customers to use that data in ways that they move faster. Turn data into action and action into insight, so. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love what we do for a living. Technology changes all the time. At the end of the day, we are always going to be working backwards from our customers. Like, we're all, we're going to connect. We're going to ask questions. Uh, we'll find out, hey, what problems are you having? We'll listen and innovate on behalf of customers. So, you know, you'll expect to see us uh, moving quickly as fast as we can to deliver value. So, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled for what's ahead. Excellent. Well, Sean, Teresa, thank you so much. Congratulations on your first dot .com. Um, you. Next year will be different again. And for everyone watching today, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.